Yeah, so good morning. It's Richard from Central Steel Build. Um, we're a steel shed manufacturing company, Central Victoria. Uh, we started, this is an early, one of the early shots of, of where we started, which was Ross um, putting up a shed that he ended up as his sales office back in the 70s. Um, he had four children, four boys, I should say, who all ended up in the business. And over the years, the boys came in, went onto the, onto the uh, out on the tools, and then have moved back into the office and taken over certain roles. So the eldest is now general manager. Um, this is where we are today, which we have around 100 employees based in Kyneton, which is not a bad, um, not a bad achievement, and it's a great place to work. So um, that's that's just a little bit from what we of what we are. But what <coughs> what we've what Ross has done, I guess, is is build a business on quality. And what I just wanted to touch base on, just briefly. Is, is the difference between a shed and a shed, because you can look at that shed and you can look at another shed and they all look the same. And unless we have a bit of an understanding on what's behind the scenes and what's involved, we can end up spending a lot of money and getting something that is not going to achieve what we're after, or it may even fall over. So there's a lot of businesses out there You'll see them in the Weekly Times and newspapers and all the rest that advertise and they put pictures of sheds and they look real cheap. Maybe because they are cheap. So this is a, this is a, 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 a sample of a sea pearl and shed frame. Um, cold rolled form, so it starts as a flat piece of metal and it's all rolled. And purlins are made, and we use purlins, and they're used to hold, uh, to attach our cladding onto the frame. What's happening here is they've, oh, through the evolution of sheds, they've got cheaper and cheaper, some companies, and they're now using those to form the whole structure of the shed. This one here collapsed simply because it didn't have anything to hold it up. This is the same shed, it was a big one, and this is, believe it or not, is not unusual. Um, we were just talking yesterday in the office and a client has just ordered a big equestrian indoor roof. Um, she got a quote from us a couple of years ago and went with a cheaper company and it collapsed. It fell over. And so she had to go through a process, a long process of suing them and finally getting her money back and had to remove everything and now she's ordered and will be in installing a proper shed. One of the problems with a sea pearl and shed is the attachment. So the material itself is to start with is probably only going to be 1.5, 1.9 millimetres thick, something like that. And then the attachments are often only two or three mil thick. So what's happened here is the client has gone to lift something up, he's torn the, the apex and the whole shed is completely ruined. Now another problem can be is if you were to bump a sea pearl and column with your tractor or your or your forklift or whatever, and bend it, structurally it's lost all its strength. So just, just a word of warning, look at what the structure of the shed is that you're looking at purchasing. How's it made? And is it made out of structural steel or is it not? The actual strength of these sheds, what holds them up is the tech screws that hold the cladding on. The cladding holds the frame up. And that's why that other one collapsed because it didn't have the cladding on. So just a little word of warning, have a look at that, know what you're purchasing. Now the next thing is, this one here is an interesting one. So this is a structural shed, structurally steel shed, built shed. Now the difference here is that it's been sold as a galvanized, uh, galvanized steel, but what we've got is a hot dip galvanized column, UB, and a pre-gal RHS. Now what that means is, and it actually happened to be imported, what that means is that it's, when it's made, it's galvanised. As soon as you weld it, cut it, grind it, whatever, you've, dis you've destroyed the galvanising. And then if moisture gets in, or salt air or something, it will corrode. It will corrode. And it's very, very difficult to get a good coating on that on anywhere you've damaged that. So this, is, this shed here was 15 years old, built 15 years before, and was literally collapsing. This here is just a very rough little picture I snapped off 
to show a piece of a, well this is actually a demo frame we take to some field days. Now what you can see is that this is all full hot dip galvanised. Now when this goes into the bath to be galvanised, we have all these vent holes minus the cobwebs. And what happens is we're coating the inside of that with galvanising as much as we're coating the outside. The chance of it ever corroding is very, very minimal, if, if at all. So a, a hot, a, if you're looking at buying a shed and you want quality, you want to be looking at a full hot dip galvanised, not just galvanised. Those little words can make a big difference to the quality of the sheds that you end up with. Now another thing that matters is the quality of the cladding. Now you might say, well, the cladding is the cladding, but it's more to it than that. So here we've got, this is an interesting one that I happened to stumble on in a, uh, a, um, a, a, a uh, photographic company that we used to use, and you could scroll back. So this building here, it's actually a school building, and you'll notice one odd sheet. This is 2010. 2012, 2013, we see something happening. Let's move on. By 2018, the roof was completely back to white, the, and it was, it was terrible. The rest of the school, the roof was fine. We'd done that. This was another company. They used imported material. This sheet here, exactly the same as the day it was put on, just as good. This is Australian blue scope material. I'm not here to stand here and promote blue scope, but I'm just telling you there's a big difference in quality. And when you buy that material brand new or you buy from a company and you don't know where it comes from, if they're not telling you where it's coming from, the odds are it'll be imported and you stand a risk of this. Is all imported material no good? No, I'm not saying that, but how do you know? If you want to know, if you want to get a good quality material, spend that better money and make sure you get Australian made because the proof's in the pudding. This here was as good as the day it was ever put on and it still is. And that's the same with... Sorry? Yeah, I understand that, but this other side... This here, it's starting to go because that's facing the west. Okay, you've got the most extreme weather. The other part, I, sh I should have zoomed out a bit because the other part of the, the school, this one here included, was just as good as the day it was laid, put down. This one here also is faded, you'll see. Um, so, when you're looking at buying a shed, my suggestion is if you want quality, you look at the frame. Is it a proper structural steel shed? Is it fully holy dip, hot dip galvanised? And does it have Australian steel? Now. We, we do our level best to use all Australian steel, and it's not always possible to only have Australian steel. There have been times in the last couple of years or times that, that we've been unable to access because there were shortages. There are also some special styles of steel that are not you can't get out of Australia. So, so be it, but as a rule of thumb for pretty much any shed, most 95, 98% of the sheds we do, it's Australian steel. So as far as what we do, central steel build. Um, we do a range of things. Agricultural is a part of it. This is a um, elders in Kyneton, which we did, so that's more commercial industrial. Um, Horslers, Shepparton, those in the area will, will be aware of that. That's, that's just an example. Uh, Mount Ida, um, Bunnings. This is, this is an interesting house that we did, going back a bit. Uh, not finished, of course. Um, this is this is a um, the um, Longreach Hall of Fame. Um, we built that a number of years ago, and I believe it hasn't fallen over yet. Um, so that's quite a bit of an icon. Um, this one here. This is a grain. This is a, a uh, fertilizer storage. These are all all been built by us, and in fact, it's out of date because we've got a big one here now. This is all for reared and grain. A um, number of people will know reared and grain, reared and fuel. We've built a lot of sheds for them, but this is an interest, these are interesting because you've got a lot of side weight, so that's a different engineering detail to go into. This is a, just a quick internal shot of the, of the new shed, which didn't show. 
to give you a bit of an idea of the, the, the size that we're talking. And you can imagine when you've got fertilizer piled up against a wall, you've got a lot of side weight, and then you could potentially have the other one empty, so you've got to engineer it to take weight against this side, or this side, or both. So these things uh, come down to engineering skill and experience. This is just a quick snap of the Ballarat sale yards, which we did a few years ago. Um, seven and a half acres of roof, they're looking at doubling it. This one here is a yard cover and a shearing shed. Now, we do a lot of yard covers. Um, just obviously, if you can get the cattle or the sheep or your stock out of the weather, the, it's easier on the, the, for the, health, the safety and health of the animal and of the human. And anyone that's done it has never looked back. It's particularly with sheep farmers, you spend a lot of time in the yards and um, why not make it more comfortable and something that's more enjoyable. This is just one of the many dairy buildings we've done. Um, as you can see, a lot of solar panels. All our engineering is, is well and truly able to cope with that and we work with the, with the company to, and, the, and the owner to, to work out who, who, what size spans we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> this is just a simple little calf shed. Obviously calf sheds are a big growing industry, um, calving and calf. Um, ventilation, very important. A lot of details go. So that depending on the type of shed you're planning to build, there's different details that need to be considered. So it's not one shed fits all. That's, I think, probably an important thing to take away. When we're looking at a shed, there's, there's companies that will just do that size, that size, or that size, but when you're talking about doing it properly, it's got to be custom done. So it's got to face the right direction. We've got to have the airflow right. We've got to have the height right. We've got to have the light right. This one here's a, a um, 3D concept. All the jobs we do will do a 3D concept, and this is a commodity shed concept. So what we've got here is commodities will be put in and then the tractor comes through with the feed bin and will be loaded here under cover. So it drives through and it's protected. Um, this was a mock-up for a property in Gippsland with a lot of water, a lot of rain. So that just gives an example of how, if you're working with us, we can give you a visual of what, what you're thinking about and then that can help fine-tune what your plans, it, it, your, what your further plans will it be. This one here is another concept we did. Now, this is a job that's, that has also gone ahead. Um, and I've put this down because it's quite interesting. The, the earlier concept you'll see had internal columns. And then as we moved on, we removed those. So now if you look at this picture here and keep that in your mind, I'll show you the real thing when it happened. And there it is. So that 3D concept might not be perfect, but it gives you a very, very good visual on what, it, what it's likely to be. And that can really help a lot of people to, to work out in their minds how it's going to work. And you've got to get your stock movement right. You've got to get your airflow right. You've, it also helps with companies if you're going to be having working with another company let's say Laley, Eagle Direct, some of these other companies, or if you're going to be building a shearing shed, uh, whatever it is, um, stockyards, to get the flow right. It's very important to get the flow right, columns in the right place, gates don't interfere. Um, as I've said, airflow, airflow is very important. Um, doesn't matter what shape this roof is, but the degrees are important. The opening of the ridge is important, the percentage of width versus opening. All these details um, help, help make the thing work as opposed to having a problem. So this one is another shot of that same one um, in action and, and is progressing very well. I will, just, I will just mention one other thing. There's, this, the, the, I talked about steel before and um, the qualities of steel. Now, as I've said, we try, we do our level best and we request Australian steel. Now, I didn't manage to get that on the slide, but I feel this is an interesting one. This, 
This is something that we might recognise from a storm in South Australia a few years ago. And I do apologise. And there was a big windstorm and a lot of these pylons went over. Now, the big, big windstorm was blamed. In actual fact, the reality was it was under spec imported steel. I won't mention the country it came from, but you can probably guess. <laughs> and, and, and this is something that we need to be careful about. Where, what are we actually buying? Because it might look okay on the outside. About three years later, two years later, same thing happened just south of Ballarat. Pylons went over, same thing happened. It was imported steel from a country I won't mention. And guess where they were buying the new ones from? Now, all I can say is, if you're gonna invest money, invest it in something that's gonna last, invest it in a, in a quality product because it doesn't really cost any more. Um, Australian steel will give you a quality that you know you can trust. Um, we would obviously love to have the opportunity to quote you, but there are other companies. There's a limited number of companies out in, in Australia that also produce a good quality shed, so I'm not trying to pretend that we're the only ones. Um, little details are what makes the difference, but um, I, I trust, I don't know if this has been any assistance, but I trust it might be a little help. Is there any, any questions? So thank you.